Covering Wizard Wars Part 2 was so much fun, Mike. I uh, was reminded of something I came across a few months ago. Related to wizardry? Oh, no. Related to war. This time... War. (laughs) This time, it's aliens doing the battling. Are they magical aliens? Wizard aliens? Maybe. Lizard wizards? Probably. Lizard wizards. Yes, they're the best kind of wizards, you know. The scariest kind. They live in caves, bro. And and you'd shoot them on sight like a fucking savage. Between the fucking eyes. <laughs> you monster. So I I mean wizard lizards and wizards and lizard wizards. Maybe <laughs> maybe UFOs are like magical so I, I I'm gonna get really nerdy here for a second and, and so bear with me. I, I don't, I'm probably going to lose everybody except for like a single person out there. And if you are that single person, then you are the fucking man. But in, in Dungeons and Dragons, I, I've already lost half our audience right there. But in Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's this expansion called Spelljammer. And it's like Dungeons and Dragons in space and like traveling the galaxy and going to, to all these different like weird dimensions and shit but it's it's the spaceships are built out of crystal like the they're formed by crystal and they're they're flown by wizards so the wizard straps himself into the into the throne or the helm or whatever i can't remember what it's called but he straps himself in and he uses his wizard powers to fly this crystal ship so what if what if that's what ufos are holy and, and, shit yeah dude yeah, and and what and when we see when we see UFOs fighting each other in the sky, it really it's not aliens. It's it's the fucking wizard wars going <laughs> cosmic. Oh That's my what it god! Is. Yeah, dude. Yeah, and and what better time for wizardry than the Renaissance? Absolutely. Yeah. Remember, remember. Anyone who's watched Ancient Aliens has heard of this, but the. Uh, the celestial phenomenon of Nuremberg, Germany. And th- this was the one, it happened in 1561, but this was the one where um, people reported all these weird shapes in the sky, like uh, spheres and crosses and apparently a huge black spear that flew across the sky at one point. Yeah, I love the wood engraving of, of this account. It's literally a bunch yeah. of geometric shapes flying around and they're all different colors. <laughs> Yeah, it's so awesome. And and from there were like these big tube things that people saw flying and they emitted these little spheres that then flew out and they battled with each other. And then this huge black uh like in in the drawing it looks like almost like this gigantic black arrowhead that flew over the sky. And apparently the uh the spheres were as they were battling each other, they were then crashing to earth and dissolving into smoke or mist. Whoa. That's the magic teleporting yeah. them out of there, right? That's just like a magical yeah. poof. Yeah, it is. They're, they're like, you'll never take my craft and poof. And then they, they you know, disappear into the wizard realm. <laughs> Where they're cursed to spend a hundred years. Yeah. Or, or conversely, they're not disappearing their their ship is being disintegrated by by evil wizard spells. And like I will melt your crystals. And they're like, no, and the crystals melt and the smoke comes up and explodes and and then the the stupid wizard melts and dissolves into nothingness because that's the way wizards do things. You can't leave evidence of wizard wars behind. Nope. Otherwise, you're a shitty wizard. <laughs> That's how they train you in wizard that, pilot school. The trick is you got to be able to teleport is, yeah. out of the crashing craft before it smashes. Yeah, either you teleport out or you die in it. That's those are your only two options. There will be no evidence that the craft are developed specifically so if they crash, they completely disintegrate. 
with the pilot inside. Because yeah. <laughs> again, there can be no evidence. And they just leave behind this little cloud of mist. But by all accounts, this is an actual account of an aerial battle with UFOs, right? I mean, no joke. This, this is something that's... Well, I mean, it, it's, it's an actual account. Um, the thing is that there's... Around this time period, there's a lot of things written in the paper. Or I, not the paper. Like, oh, the, the Nuremberg Dispatch. You know, it, but it was... There's a lot of things that were that was printed at the time um, that seemed to kind of lean toward um, almost like like prophesizing in a way or like like soothsayers in in Rome, you know, thing, things like that. And even if you read the translation of the article, the very end of the article starts talking about how it was a miracle and there's there's no denying that by witnessing these events that there is a God in heaven. Hmm. Using UFOs as a chance to preach the good word, are we? Well, it it wasn't even preaching the good book. I think it was um, what one, there's, there's a, a few different explanations for what could have happened. One being that it was sun dogs, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, sun dogs look cool, and they and it's gives the appearance of there being like spheres next to the sun, or or you know some geometric shapes on the side of the sun. But I don't think anybody seeing a sun dog would uh, then say that there's all these craft flying around and doing battle and crashing to the earth with steam and smoke. You know, that just doesn't go along with it. Carl Jung actually wrote about this event and that's kind of where the event itself got what was first really looked at I guess from a from a wide perspective um, but he wrote about it in a book called Flying Saucers a modern myth of things seen in the skies and he seemed to have the view that what happened was a natural phenomenon in the sky that was then given religious and military interpretations. Hmm. So he he's thinking that it's it's more like you know back in the day when they'd be like, oh, I saw a a hawk fly away with a snake clutched in its talons, and he was flying towards the east, and that means this. And I I think he was saying it was more a situation like that. Ah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, but interestingly, there was another event that occurred a few years later. Uh, this one wasn't in Nuremberg. It was in uh, a place called Basel, uh, Switzerland. And this one, it was pretty much the same thing. It's weird. But this happened over a period of time, apparently three times, actually, in, in 1566. It happened on the 27th and 28th of July and then again on August 7th. But there were three different events. Uh, the first event was a weird... So it was 9 p.m., first of all, but the sun was still in the sky. And the report said that it lost its radiance and it shrunk down to a size no bigger than the full moon. And then it appeared to weep tears of blood. And then behind the sun went dark. Whoa. And then... Yeah. And then... um the when the moon came up the moon was also blood red and then the next day when the sun rose at six in the morning the sun was still blood red and it cast the a red light over the entire village and then finally on august 7th the sun came up and there were large black spheres that came and started flying all over the sky and again they appeared to do battle Wow, so it sounds like these crafts were causing a massive atmospheric disturbance. Or maybe it was just, um, again, superstitious interpretations of actual celestial phenomena. But I mean, even even more to, the, to that point, um, around the same time as the Nuremberg sightings, there was sightings of knights in the sky riding across the sky 
and that happened on two occasions in the area around Nuremberg. Wow. So I, I to me, it seems like it's more, um, more weird, superstitious interpretations of actual of events that that most people couldn't explain. And even though this was in the Renaissance era, you know, I, I people are always prone to to flights of fancy. I think, and. Who knows? Maybe back then, that's that's what sold. Just like sensationalism sells now. They're like, "Oh my God, there are these crazy things in the sky." The, the funny thing—I I, might have mentioned this on the show though, but I, I can't remember. Um, but before I had ever heard of this event, I had this weird dream one time that seemed so fucking real. Like like it was one of those dreams you wake up in it, and it seemed more like a memory than an actual dream. But I had this dream that I was sitting outside and all of a sudden this this huge like sheet of clouds flew over and just covered the sky completely and then as the clouds started to disperse there were all these weird shapes in the sky like there were there were spheres and then there i remember distinctly it was the the shape that looked like uh, the wings of a biplane except not attached to a plane and they were just like flying through the sky and and then when I watching Ancient Aliens, that, that was the first time that I that I heard of this. Um, when I was watching Ancient Aliens, and they were talking about, it, I'm like, oh my god, that's just like my dream. That's crazy. And, you know, yeah, I just I, I like that was just like I could picture it perfectly because it was like almost exactly like my dream, except there wasn't a big black spear that flew through the sky. But there were X's and biplane wings and and spheres flying all over the place. It was it was crazy. But yeah, I don't I don't think there's much to this. I would I would think it. I think I might maybe give a little more um, a little more credence to it if it wasn't for the fact that there were these weird events that happened in the sky that were also attributed to. Um, religion really um one i i mentioned the the knights but the the knights appeared both before this event and then later during the the 30 years war in 1618 uh, they were reported to see knights fighting in the sky again yeah i see what you're saying this you know throwing the bones before a battle we talked about that uh the event where let's see how, I think it was the Guadalupe event where the the sun had a ring around it. God damn it! What was that, Mike? The the miracle of the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. You can see how easily religions tie into that show, stuff. But that one's like a little bit more specific case, as they were visited by the Virgin Mary before it happened. But it's I can see how they can tie a natural phenomenon that's spectacular like that with some type of religious symbol, but I don't know, something kind of, I can't get past just the good old fact, like with the Mongolian death worm, them being shown a type of snake and them going, yeah, that's it. That's not, that's not at all what the fuck a Mongolian death worm is described to look like. I mean, they're, I know everybody knows it's a wizard sausage. It's common knowledge at this point, common fucking knowledge, (laughs) but they're blood red. You know, I mean, that's the age-old description of them. So for them to say some tan snake was the Mongolian death worm, like I said in the show, they know what a fucking snake was. They they just would have called it like a really violent, poisonous, spitting snake. You know, if they if they thought it was just a religious experience or something like that, I don't, what's the projectiles and fighting of craft in the sky about? You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe just to bolster their belief in god or their superiority or i don't know any fucking number of things it could be wow believe in the lord or i shall shoot you down or or maybe it's just wizards and their 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 abilities to fly ships has been lost to time or maybe they still know and there's a secret group of wizards that travel the world in ufos doing wizardly deeds maybe there's good wizards and evil wizards and you know whenever whenever Against all odds, something good happens, and you see a shooting star. That's not a shooting star. That's a flying wizard. He's casting good spells on you. Like, <laughs> that's Glendor. And then you see a UFO, and 
Yeah, yeah, it's Glandor the Good. <laughs> and then, Protector of Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sprinkler of good thoughts. <laughs> but then on the other side, you've got evil wizards that like to abduct people and stick things in their butt. So Yeah, fiery comets, you know, you all that stuff. take the good with the bad, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think they're, I think that uh, maybe wizards are the new barn owl. 2020 has revealed that barn owls are actually wizards. By default, that means that wizards are also the Mothman and the Hopkinsville Goblin and also the Flatwoods Monster and also Joe Nickel is the leader of a <laughs> wizard cult. He is the wizard supreme. Well, see, if we're talking about wizards, they're going to be able to take on any form. So they're just, their level of fuckery has no bounds. And that's what's scary about them is because there's good wizards and bad wizards. Just barn owls are just evil. So you can identify the enemy quite easily. But they could also be Joe Nickel. Yeah. But, well, maybe he's not so friendly. They take on, no, I will take on the form of Joe Nickel. No, not Joe Nickel. Oh, my God, he's going to dash my dreams. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe wizards are a bigger threat than barn owls. There's no maybe. (laughs) Well, obviously, they're a bigger threat. They're the biggest threat of all because you never see them coming. Well, I came across... Like I said in the beginning, uh, a story that that's just incredible. And according to multiple, like stone, the wrestler, just incredible. Oh no, Mister Incredible is, is no, 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 X Factor fan. No, okay. <laughs> but according to multiple stone carvings, engravings on ox scapulas and tortoise shells, oral history, and some of the oldest silk and rice paper ever to be fucking written on. In the 13th century BC, a craft from another star system landed in northern China. And as quickly as these craft arrived, the people of northern China were forced into slavery by tall, thin humanoid beings that, if away from their ship long enough, would have to wear helmets that had three antennae, quote, as thin as bamboo shoots on top of the helmet. And the, the writings also say that They believe these helmets were some type of breathing apparatus. The people were made to build structures until one day they got sick of the oppression of forced labor and decided to launch an attack on their newly founded alien overlords. And there was many attempts at revolt that failed because the aliens had a superior technology. But after a certain battle began, the people of northern China quickly realized that they had no chance like the other times at defeating these alien invaders and that death was imminent for everybody, basically. But as soon as the people lost hope, the scrolls and writings say that a band of apparently already known about third group of people, I guess, showed up and aided the Chinese people defeating the aliens. And they describe these people as being 12-foot-tall giants with red hair that wore thick leather armor. Oh, shit. The red-haired giants are back. Yeah. And they said they were from the north. Man, these guys get everywhere, don't they? They sure do. They're in the fucking Grand Canyon. They're in South America. They're in China fighting aliens now. Yeah. But they helped them uh, defeat the aliens and freed the people and lived happily ever after. Does it say how they defeated the aliens? They said that these giants were so fucking big. That they just uppercutted them out of their boots? Way better than that, dude. They would easily... Way better. Roundhouse kicks? No way. Way better. Think darker, man. Power bombs. <laughs> nope. Stunners. Uh, they, they would easily... Stunners, yes. <laughs> Perfect. They would easily defeat these aliens in combat by simply picking them up and breaking their backs. So, so they're like Bane... Yeah, yeah. That had to be one hell of a fight, though. picking up Snape. Apply that to what you know about, like, hand-to-hand combat today and just, like, peer to the left and see a 12-foot-tall dude with an alien in each hand slamming him on the ground. You're like, whoa, shit. Oh, God, that that needs to be a movie. Red-haired alien... uh, Red-haired giants versus aliens. (laughs) I I just... I want to see, like, some, some... Somebody discovers some cave system in the side of the Grand Canyon and they go in and 
they see all this gold and shit and they dig through there and they see the giants, the, the, what they think are mummified remains of these giants. But because they broke the magical seal, they come back to life. And then the giant and people freak out like, Oh my God, there's giants. And everyone's like thinking that they're going to be these big monsters. But immediately they spring forth from the earth and they just start fucking drop kicking UFOs out of the sky and they start crashing <laughs> to the earth and they just tear open the, the sides of these flying saucers and just smashing all these aliens that we had no idea were here. They were using cloaking technology the whole time, but but these giants, they can see through their their technology and, and just smash the shit out of them. Like, we're here to save you. And then we realized that that because the giants were entombed and in and, and hibernation or, or whatever was going on, that our world has basically become they live and that the giants have to save us all over again. Like, God damn it, humans, when will you fend for yourselves? And we're like, never, we suck. And they're like, well, it's okay, we'll save you. And they just start bashing aliens left and right. It'll be like Kung Pao with giants. Yeah, it'd be perfect. But because we're a bunch of idiots, eventually we'd be like, oh, fuck you, giants, you're huge, and you can kill all of us, we have to entomb you again. They're like, oh, no, you'll never learn your lesson. And we block them up in a, in a cave system again. Like, whew, good thing, good thing they killed those aliens for us. Meanwhile, the aliens are like, oh, sweet, they got rid of the giants. Let's get back to Earth and, and go spy on them and enslave them again. And then round and round we go. And next time, though, next time, they're just going to be like, fuck you, fend for yourself. We're going to just chill. Ooh, the day the giants turn their backs. Yeah. I mean, we kind of deserve it at that point, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. I, I noticed that with these giants right away too. It seems uh, that the Chinese people knew about, or at least had pre-existing knowledge of their existence. The writings talk about how they had flaming red hair, which is not native to China. And I, I don't know this. I don't know if it bothered me or what. But the writings and carvings depict these giants wearing uh, thick and heavy armor. But the armor is visibly Chinese suggesting that they lived in the area for quite some time, maybe even centuries, clearly sharing artistic similarities, despite being a supposed secluded, no-contact race of giant fucking people. And there's multiple civilizations that report what we commonly call wild men, and they're often described as being giants, 8 to 12 feet tall and with red hair. Now this, do you think that this could have been a tribe of wild men or Bigfoot that hate fucking aliens? Um, No. I think that they're a race of giants that hate aliens and they want to smash them every day. And that's what they do. They are the original people. And the the thing is their bones, they're, they're designed differently than human bones. And they, they've got a special, uh, a special makeup so that they can't be fossilized and that, and they, once the, the flesh from, from around the bones has rotted off the bones quickly decay, so there's no evidence of their existence except for the mummified carcasses that that were that have been found all over the place. But those are because they're they're mummified, but secretly they're also alive because they're magical beings. But they were the original beings here, and then when then when the ancient aliens came, they got into fights, and then the ancient aliens are like, well, you know what? We're gonna manipulate other species on the planet so that we've got a race of things to fight you. And then they created people and then tricked people into thinking the giants were evil, so they they entombed the giants. And then the the giants break out, and they're like, we will save you people and fight the aliens. Yay, giants! And then they fight the aliens, and then we forget that there's an enemy, and then you know a few generations from now, it's like, oh, fuck, there's giants in the mountains. Fuck them, they're going to eat us and kick our dog and so then you you lock them back up in their tombs and uh you know they're they're the original inhabitants and we're just stupid humans that keep stealing their shit and locking them in caves because we're ungrateful pricks <laughs> well you're probably right <laughs> i'm i'm definitely right bunch of ungrateful like we're we're the we're the same people that if if Jesus were to come back today and be like a homeless guy on the street trying to preach people to be like, 
This guy is fucking crazy. They wouldn't recognize the second coming of Jesus. They'd be like, nah, whatever, it's fucking oh, yeah, crazy they're... homeless guy talking about being the son of God. All right, blow it out your ass. Yeah, there's one in every He's town. Like, he has no, no, no chance. No, for real, it's me. Yeah, no, no, that's that's the world we live in. If Jesus was real and came back, his own believers would fucking ignore him. <laughs> get a haircut, hippie. That's what they'd say. Quit smoking the dope and get a job. Yeah, go, go get a job, you doper. <laughs> well, I got to thinking... Uh, the way that these ancient writings go, and, and I like the way that these ancient writings are, are translated. I mean, there are no writings from the time of the event. All the writings are found to be written after it, but they're written like records, you know, like post-event. And uh, this could explain such details. It, it almost reads like Herodotus, you know, where he's gone back and actually talked to people and survivors of certain battles. It feels like testimony. But I... I kind of wondered if these giants could have been Celts. And they're just calling them giants by comparison? Absolutely. And I, and I thought, is that possible? And the answer is, fuck yeah. There's actually DNA-tested Celtic mummies in China. So they apparently... Well, why would they say they were 12 feet tall? Because at the time, I don't know. Maybe we, I don't know how tall the average Chinese male was. I believe, I believe at the time, like, I mean, even going back... To like when Napoleon was around, being five six was like average, right? And that's that's in Europe, but I mean, I'd have to think in Asia it'd probably be similar. And then, so to say someone was twelve feet tall, that's twice the size of an average person, more than twice the size of an average person. Yes, yeah, so see, I, I was wondering why they would call them twelve feet tall. It could be that they were just bigger than them. Maybe they were ferocious. But uh, funny enough looking things up, I came across a movie made about this in 2017 that slipped right past us, and rightfully so. It was The Great Wall with Matt Damon. And Oh shit, I remember that movie. I didn't know it was about an alien giant war, though. Yep, it, it, it kind of got... Oh, fucking shit. No, I need to watch it. Yeah, I watched a couple clips of it, and it might it's the fucking his worst acting yet. But it, it it was well worth the watching from what I gathered just from a couple of clips. It's beautifully shot. It's over the top and just a cool movie. But it's about uh, an Irishman who travels to China to try to steal the secrets of gunpowder. And they catch him. And the movie got shot down because it shows him on the cover dressed as like a, a Chinese warrior. And people were like, hey. But that was a bad call on the people who did the promotion for that movie's part because he's got long hair and a beard for most of the movie he's a prisoner and then these fucking sorry for blowing it for everybody who hasn't seen it uh these fucking creatures come and they've got to battle them off but uh in the movie he ends up helping them you know they give him proper clothes that's why he's dressed in their attire later but uh he helped them so maybe in this war that's written in these scrolls something like that happened these celts some celts were there and they helped them and saved the day. So they described them as being giant like heroes, almost godlike figures. And that's that's something that you do tend to hear a lot. And and anyone who's watched Ancient Aliens can attest to that. I I was just watching Ancient Aliens the other night, actually. I'm and sorry. I I know. Ancient Aliens. But then that's it. I was just watching it. No. But I I was <laughs> When was the last time? <laughs> when was the last time you watched it? Oh shit! Uh, a few years, man. Maybe five years. So, it's utterly ridiculous, obviously. But there's a lot of there, legitimately. There's a lot of good information if you take the alien shit out of it. Like you, you do get some some good uh, information about mythology and uh, some some decent information about ancient cultures it's just anything they say about aliens just makes it ridiculous but a lot of times if you just were to instead of say aliens say you know whatever their mythology was it would work a lot better most definitely we've said but, many times it was great when it was the what three four part series in the beginning and then just milked yeah. it but but i mean even then it, it was just it was attributing something to aliens that that could be any number of, of different and more likely things. 
like the idea that um that there's a forgotten civilization that we don't know about to me is far more interesting than aliens came down and and did this stuff for us because it, it just it doesn't make sense because if that was the case if they're giving us this technology why are why did they stop why are they like all right see ya we're we're it's just like with with the gods in mythology all the um the myths and even in the bible and and um modern religion relatively modern religion anyway um the within the the scripture and the stories and the mythology however you want to look at it uh the gods or god or angels or spirits whatever would frequently visit and interact with with their followers why did they stop are they all of a sudden like all right you guys are you're cool keep worshiping me i'm not going to be around for a good 2000 years though but keep 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 uh keep on keeping on guys you know keep keep that belief strong i'll maybe i'll be back sometime when i'm ready to kill y'all and then we can <laughs> hang out after that see ya like it just <laughs> But but you hear you see that shit all the time, like even even if you're looking at at something that we now consider mythology, like Greek and Roman mythology or Egyptian mythology, there's stories of the gods walking among men and interacting with men, and and even especially in the case of Greek mythology, breeding with humans to create half gods that live on Earth. Right. And and what why did they stop? Why, or, or maybe they didn't. Maybe, maybe that's what the fucking aliens are all about. But it, I don't know. To me, it just seems like it's it's one mythology for another. And I love the stories, and it's it's fun to to have different takes on the stories. But it, it just seems like another type of mythology to me. Hmm. Well, the writings and carvings and all that stuff have always existed talking about this battle and there are plenty of pictures of the artifacts that you can check out online Uh, i'll put some in the show notes but what's restarted interest in this case was the recent discovery of a three thousand year old carving of creatures that match the descriptions in these ancient scrolls matt Matt damon wasn't the one that revitalized the story no he wasn't but Uh, (laughs) this stone was found you can't win them all matt damon but this one, this stone was found in uh, Goyang Dong in the Lu Ding province. It I sent the pictures of the stone that was found to you right now, Mike. Check out the fucking mugs on these dudes. They look like scary skeleton men. They do. They're fucking hideous and goblins. Yeah, like that last one could be a fucking orc from Lord of the Rings, right? And then that first one looks like he could be a scary Mortal Kombat character. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. So are these supposed to be the aliens or the giants? These are the aliens. Oh, the aliens. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the writings are in a language called Gogogwin. Go, uh, oh, shit. Yeah. Gogogwin. Gogogwin? Gogogwin. Got and me, it's... man. I'm, I'm, uh, my, my ancient Chinese is, is very, very rusty. Yeah. It's, it's so old. It's, it's called archaic. And I just kind of skimmed right over that these people were forced into slave labor to build structures. And the writings say that the people were made to build pyramids. And are there pyramids in China? Mm. Yes, there are. And they said that these pyramids were built to have pipes that led into the ground, a ventilation system. It was supposed to draw something out of the earth. Like free energy. Yeah, maybe. And keep in mind that Keep in mind the the Egyptian pyramids also have these tunnels that we don't really have an explanation for that that go into the pyramid and then have a exit point, but it's not a tunnel that would be used for a person to go through. Yeah, those tunnels are weird, dude. Yeah, there's there's a, some sometime I'd like to to do a show devoted to it, but there's an interesting theory that pyramids were ancient power plants. Yeah, you've talked about that before. Yeah, it's and and Tesla had a design for a machine that was very similar to the layout. Like if you were to take a cross section of the Great Pyramid with the tunnels, it's very similar in appearance to that. And his, his was a it was a free energy machine that was able to 
pull energy from the earth itself. Wow. Because, I mean, if you think about it, the, the earth is constantly in motion. So there's got to be a way that you can harness that energy. Not to mention the fact that we've got heat energy within the earth's core itself to draw on. Absolutely. So it makes sense that you'd be able to tap into that somehow. And, and he had a way to do it. And there's there, there's some evidence that suggests that it, that it could be the case. And I don't think it's aliens. I think it was just something that, that was understood back then that we somehow lost sight of now and you know going back to ancient aliens there's that that cool picture of like three egyptian men carrying this gigantic light bulb is it an actual light bulb i don't fucking know but it looks like one it's got a filament in there and everything why is it so goddamn big though yeah probably to blind the giants (laughs) so they can lock them in a tomb alien visitors to china might not be such a one-off thing are you familiar with the dropa stones yeah, a little bit. I, I do remember uh, reading about them. Much like the tatzel worm, it's more a, a thing that I remember reading about, but I don't remember very much about. These were 716 one-foot diameter circular stone disks with tiny hieroglyphs around the edge found in 1938 on the Tibetan-Chinese border by ar- archaeologist Chi Puti, and it was dated as being around 12,000 years old. And it was actually translated, and it says, and I quote, The drops came from the clouds in their craft. The men, women, and children of the neighboring peoples hid in the caves ten times before sunrise, when at last they understood the sign language of the Dropas, and they realized that the newcomers had peaceful intentions. So it sounds like alien visitors have been to China before, and it seems like China loves aliens right back. Uh, China's Guzi Hill Providence is home to a 500 meter, 1,640 foot aperture spherical telescope that's said to be mainly used to search for extraterrestrials. I mean, all these stones that are talking about this alien war, too. I mean, it must have been impactful. I mean, they're finding these carved stones on the South China coast. And this took place in northern China. So there's a, I mean, it, it seems to be. I mean, it's written throughout their history. There's accounts of this war. There's not just one. So what do you think? I don't know. What if, what if it's not aliens, though? Like, what if it is an ancient race or an ancient uh, civilization, if not a different race, just a different civilization that looks different? Well, see, that's we can say that about the giants, but these aliens came from a craft from the sky, and, and I don't know how they were able to figure but it out. But that's a thing. Maybe, maybe it w- just because they came from... A, the sky does it necessarily mean that they're aliens we could come down from the sky in a fucking helicopter and if no one knows what a helicopter is that's pretty fucking magical like oh my god look at this thing that just came down from the sky and they get out doesn't mean i'm an alien it just means i've got better technology than you have well see the scrolls say specifically that these crafts these visitors these aliens came from a different star system and i don't know how they be able to know that but uh i mean if they were enslaved for a period of time they must have been communicating with these fucking things they must have been working around them there had to have been guards on them so maybe it's something that they learned from them themselves or maybe it was something maybe it was a story that they adapted from from the sumerians with with the anunnaki because that sounds exactly like the anunnaki thing would they know so about that either, in either ancient china i mean i i mean maybe maybe that's i i would I, if they're you know if they're great civilizations i would have to think that they would at least know about each other and i know that samaria is be- came before ancient china but uh as far as civilizations go but because it was so influential and and you know one of the the first civilizations and the first real cultures i think it would be possible that echoes of their mythology would spread and and kind of be carried across the the i guess continents but i i I think that it could just like in the same way that we knew about egyptian and ancient greek mythology just because it's it was such an important part of a very important culture 
So there's a lot of things preserved from that. I, th- I, I think it would be a possibility that they would know about that and they would adopt it for their own legends and mythology. You know, it could have, it could be as simple as, as, um, people that were aware of or, or found something or obtained, you know, in, in some way heard these stories of the Anunnaki and then they start relating it as though it's actual history instead of mythology. And like, well, this is, this is the way it was back then. There were aliens. Well, they wouldn't call them aliens, but there were these beings that came from the sky and they enslaved us, us being mankind, not specifically this population. And, and they made us mine and do all sorts of things for them. And, and we tried to fight back. But we couldn't because they had so many technologies that we could not possess. And yada, yada, yada. In come the red-haired giants and uppercut everybody to the moon. See, I don't know. The if, if they didn't describe them as, as, you know, just not, they didn't say sky people. They said that they came in an aircraft from a different. Right, but, but again, the aircraft doesn't mean they're aliens. I'm not, I'm not buying it. Even if the aircraft is real. That's fine. It can be real, but it could also be fucking lizard wizards, <laughs> or or you know maybe maybe the uh, the other side of things is that maybe the Anunnaki were real and they were in China as well, and they're like work bitches. We got resources we need. I don't we're know. fucking lazy. Don't want to do it. Yeah. If only they could have harnessed the power of the giants. If they could harness that power. I bet giants could do some fucking real good mining work. Yeah, that's one thing I found interesting too is that they didn't enslave the Chinese people to mine. Like, you know, the whole gold thing that we're used to hearing that made them build the pyramids. I thought that was an interesting twist. Well, it's because they they had they had the uh they had the people in the Middle East mining the gold. Mm. And they're like, "You know, but we we've got the gold. Now we need the power. You there, build us some power." And then they build the the pyramids, and then they're in Egypt doing the same thing. You, we need that power, and they've got a, this whole network of power, and that's why there's pyramids all over the fucking world because they were building a goddamn network of power, of power. Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Enjoy the podcast? Get yourself a Whatcast t-shirt or a sticker pack. Who was that dude on that one episode? Try the links in Homie's page. All this and more can be found at www.thewhatcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.